Hey world, I have some great news. I am completely done with the cyberpunk Skynet looking animatronic skull face. I have also tuned in my holographic self to a frequency that's a little bit easier on your eyes. Problem is everything I touch also turns into a hologram now. That is until I set it down or take it off. I did quite a job on this and things keep getting in the way like you wouldn't believe. Shit happens. But now it's all cleared up and I'm very bullish on this channel's future. Very bullish. The skull face is simply a $2 Halloween mask that I cut in half. Mine had an easy to cut jawline. It has two LEDs connected to a potentiometer to adjust their brightness. I came up with this idea while testing the strength of the new UV LEDs I got, which are brighter than the sun. I swapped out the eyes that were in there with new ping pong balls that are painted black and I poked holes through them where I glued my new LEDs, which I wired up and showed you in the previous video. I made sure to test their limits because not all LEDs are created equally. Different colors and different sizes can take certain voltages. You could have the same size, such as a five millimeter or three millimeter, and it won't be able to take the same amount of voltage due to the color that it emits. So make sure to refer to the charts that are usually on the inside of the box of the LEDs that you buy on Amazon or eBay or Banggood or wherever. This is also why I ended up getting a multimeter, which showed me how much voltage the LEDs could take until they were fried. If you need a multimeter and you want one that looks good, looks sexy, works really well, has all kinds of functions, check out the one I have in the link in the description. After I replaced the LEDs, I decided that the servo thing needed to be situated out. Before I had two servos on a, that were mounted on a box. One servo had been opened up and rewired, which allowed it to function in the opposite direction. So you could mount one this way and one that way, and you could have them rotate down and up the same because the wires were switched on the one. The problem with this is it's overkill. It's not really necessary with something so light as, as a mask like this. They also eat up a lot of juice. I decided to scrap that entire thing and instead I attached one servo close to the inside of the upper part of the jaw. This would be closer to the point of movement and after experimenting with a lot of different wires, I had the twisted wires and I had a solid wire that was curved and it would just move it up and down. The problem is it was really hard to get a natural looking movement and I was always having the thing destroy itself. It would pop out of alignment because it was just trying to go straight up and down or straight in, a, in this curve. And it was a little, a little overkill. So being my genius self, I came up with this amazing idea to attach a spring onto the servo. This would reduce the tension between the, the servo arm and the actual bottom part of the jaw. I just use hot glue like I usually do to fashion the entire thing and it worked out pretty well. It works out really nicely. If I accidentally push the, the servo to go the opposite direction, it doesn't do anything to damage the mask like it did before. I springed into action. Sprang. Sprung. Once the battery runs out, I can just unscrew the back of the, uh, the gumball case that I have with a peanut butter jar lid on it and I can just pull out the battery, recharge that. I also put on female header connectors, so if I needed to swap out any of the parts, like the LEDs, if they fried, I could just re-solder up another wired, extended wire LED, twist it up, and then pop it back in, and then you know keep it in place with glue. I'm experimenting with this kind of, um, this kind of setup, and it seems to be working uh, for the time being. It doesn't look very sexy, it's not very slim factor, but for now, while I'm still learning, that's what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm very happy with those results and I think it worked out well and gives me a lot more ideas for the future with certain projects. And I think I'm gonna be using this idea to fix my problem with my pet robot going up and down. Reducing it down to one servo, I didn't need as much juice. What I did was take two 18650 rechargeable lithium ion batteries. They're very popular. I got the Samsung brand because those are pretty reliable. Put them into a case. I wired it up properly so they're in series. And when you wire batteries in series, so you have the minus, plus, minus, plus, and then you connect your, your, your leads to the ends of the battery pack the proper way. So you have the ground coming out one end and the 
the positive coming out the other. When you do that, it adds the voltage. So what I was looking at was something around, you know, 9 to 12 volts. Um, these batteries had about four and a half volts or something like that, or 4.3 volts. So it was a lot of voltage. I also learned that the chips that I use can only take about 4.8 to 5 volts maximum. Anything after that can potentially fry the internals of the chip. This is okay. The chips are cheap anyway. So that's another reason why I got the multimeter and highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. You got to get one. Go get one now. It's in the description. Go get it. So now that I had a lot more juice to work with with the two powerful rechargeable batteries, I needed to reduce that voltage and that's where a voltage regulator comes into play. So between my battery pack and my board which has everything wired up that everything taps into that power source, I have reduced the voltage and you get these little boards they're on Amazon or eBay or wherever you want to get them and they usually have a little screw on them and then you adjust that screw this is why you need a multimeter go get it it's in the description you adjust that and you can see how much voltage is coming out of the other end of that little that little board so I definitely recommend to get that if you're going to be using a lot of battery juice uh, connected to a, a small chip like the one that we use, the, the Atmega 328P or similar chips that can only handle about five volts. I know that's a lot of information to work with, but it's vital information that I wish I had when I was starting out. It doesn't matter if you're gonna use Raspberry Pi or, or Arduino or anything like that. You, you gotta know these mistakes. You gotta learn from these mistakes that others make and it'll make you save time and money on your own projects. Last, I wanted to control the LEDs with the potentiometer and the servo with the joystick from far away. I've covered how to do this in my previous video, so go check them out. I wasted a few very long sections of solid core wire and soldered them to my main board, which holds it all together. Wiring it up is much more complex than the two-dimensional design. So if you get lost in trying to make your stuff, always refer back to your two-dimensional drawing. It simplifies it and saves you a lot of headache. That's pretty much it. Oh, and he needed a stand. Well, look at you, all grown up. How you doing? Things okay? Hello? Wake up. Damn it. I spent all this time trying to get this thing to work. It doesn't even work. I soldered everything up. I double checked all my connections. I, I checked with the multimeter. Nothing was fried. You have to work. I've been working so hard just to get you to work. It took like a freaking year to get you to work. What's the big deal? All I wanted to do was have a good time, have a good game, have a good stream. <laughs> so for the next video, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to implement my spring. I also got that 3D printer, so uh, we'll put all that, we'll figure out some sort of design and put it into the pet robot. And then we'll probably use that to make some sort of rail system. I don't know. I, I have some other stuff that I could use. but. <coughs> oh shit. What the hell is going on? Ugh. <coughs> Weird. I could swear I feel like somebody's watching me. I don't know what's going on, but. <coughs> so, anyway, I'll see you on the next video. I'll explain a little bit more about this guy and we'll see where we go from there. Stay grounded. Ah!